What's up guys, Rob from TrollingMotorParts.com here, and today we're going to be replacing the control board for a Minn Kota Talon Bluetooth model. The control board mounts to the main extrusion and is located underneath the housing covers. It's the brains of your Talon and controls all of the electronic functions. When you push a button on your remote or the control panel, all of the information travels through this board. If your Talon's not responding or if it just clicks when you try and deploy or retract it, it could be the sign of a bad control board. If you guys need to pick one of these up, we'll have the link in the description below. I'm going to show you how to replace it step by step, so let's get started. Okay, so first thing we're going to do is disconnect the Talon from power. Next, we're going to remove the housing covers. There's two number two Phillips screws on one side and six on the other side. And now we can remove the housing covers. Now we can free up the motor shaft from the wrap drum. First, you're gonna remove this E-clip with a flathead screwdriver. Next, we can remove the wrap drum spacer with a pair of needle nose pliers. And now we can slide the wrap drum over to pull out the drive pin. We're going to remove the red and black power wires and also the yellow wires from the control board. Now we can remove the three Phillips screws from the bracket holding the motor on. Now we can slide the motor out. I recommend using a screwdriver from the opposite side to hold the wrap drum in place while the motor is out. Now with the motor out of the way, we can remove the wrap drum sensor. There's two Phillips screws holding this on. And now we can remove the rest of the wires from the control board. This one here, you'll have to cut the heat shrink off. And now we can cut the three wires for the LED light. And once the wires are free, we can remove the three Phillips screws holding the control board on. And now we can pull the control board off. Now we can remove the two screws holding the top cover on. And slide it out of there. And last, we can remove these two screws down here holding on the sensor. It's important not to lose these two spacers. These are going to go in between the bracket and the extrusion of the talon whenever you reinstall it. Thank you. 
And now we can reinstall our new control board. We're going to start by sliding our spike indicator sensor bracket up through the extrusion. Next, we can reinstall the bracket. You want to make sure that you put these spacers in between the bracket and the extrusion of the talon. So it'll go screw, bracket, spacer, and then the extrusion. Next, we can put our plastic wire sleeve back on. This is to protect the wires from your cables as they're going up and down. Now we can feed our three LED light wires up through the extrusion. And once you feed the wires through, we can put the two screws back in the top cover. And now that all your wires are fed through, we can go ahead and mount the control board back to the extrusion. And now we can hook our wires back up to the control board. We're going to start with the three LED wires. Those are going to color coordinate with the three wires on the control board. To connect these wires, we're going to be using the scotch lock connectors that were provided with your control board. To use these, you're going to slide the wire into the hole. There's two holes on the bottom side. You'll want to make sure you get them in there all the way. Once they're up in there, you can take a pair of pliers and clamp it shut. You want to make sure you get them all the way tight, tug on them and make sure they don't come out of there. And you can go ahead and repeat the same step for the other two wires. Now we can reconnect our green ignition switch wire. You're going to use the long piece of heat shrink that was provided. You're going to slide that down onto the wire and then reconnect. Next we're going to reinstall our wrap drum sensor. You're going to feed it up underneath the control board and install it to the bracket using the two provided screws. You'll notice the wrap drum sensor is flat on one side and raised on the other side. The raised end is going to go in to the bracket, this little hole right here. So it's going to mount just like that. This sensor does crack pretty easy so it's important not to over tighten these screws. Now we can reconnect our black and white power cable wires to the board. I'm going to slide the heat shrink down over them first. The white wire is going to go to the center post right here. And the black wire to this post. Now we can go ahead and reinstall our new motor. You're going to start by putting the E-clip into this groove right here. And once that's in place, we can slide the brass bushing down the shaft and up to the E-clip. And now we can reinstall our motor assembly. Now we can put our three motor screws back in. You'll want to start these by hand so that you don't cross thread them.
and now we can feed the motor wires down underneath the control board. Now that the motor is mounted, we need to check to see if the drive pin hole on the motor shaft is lined up with the groove on the wrap drum. If it is, you can go ahead and put your drive pin back in and lock the wrap drum back into place. If it's not, an easy way to get it lined up is to hook 12 volts to the yellow wires to disengage the motor brake. Once you do this, you can spin the motor using a 7 16 wrench. You can also do this with the motor still mounted. I just have this one off to make it easier to demonstrate. Now that these are lined up, we can drop the drive pin down into place. I'm gonna put some pressure on it from the wrap drum so it doesn't fall out. I'm gonna tap it down there. Now we can reconnect our motor wires to the control board. I'm gonna slide the heat shrink down over the red and black. The red wire is gonna to go to this post here. And the black to this post. Now we can reconnect our two yellow brake wires to the two yellow wires on the control board using the scotch lock connectors. Now we can check all of our connections and make sure they're tight. And if they are, we can go ahead and torch the heat shrink. Uh, be very careful whenever you're applying heat next to the control board. Now we can tuck all of our excess wires up underneath the control board and out of the way. Now we can put our brass bushing back on the shaft, our wrap drum spacer back in, and last, the E-clip. To program the Talon control board, you're gonna hook up your black and white power leads to your 12 volt power supply. You're gonna make sure that it is retracted by pushing the up button on the control panel. Once you do this, you can connect the green wire to the hot lead of your power supply and within one second of making this connection, you're going to press and release the down button on the control panel. The talent should begin beeping. Before the beeping stops, you're going to disconnect the green wire from the power supply and then press and release the down button on the control panel. The talent should extend all the way out and then automatically retract. If it's programmed correctly, all five indicator lights should come on at full extension. And once you do that, you can go ahead and put your housing covers back on. Make sure when you're putting these housing covers back on that you check that the buttons are all compressing when you push these buttons. It's pretty aggravating when you put the covers all back together and then the button is slightly off and it's not engaging on the control board. So just be aware of that as you're putting the covers back on.
And once the covers are put back on, you can go ahead and test. If everything works okay, you are finished. So that covers it for the control board replacement. If you guys need to pick one of these up, we'll have the link in the description below. I hope this video helped. If it did, make sure to give us a like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and keep trolling.